الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله ادى الامانه وبلغ الرساله ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها إلا هالك عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم جعل منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين رب العالمين قال الله تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقرن في بيوتكن ولا تبرجن تبرج الجاهلية الأولى وأقمنا الصلاة وآتينا الزكاة وأطعنا الله ورسوله إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا واذكرن ما يتلى في بيوتكن من آيات الله والحكمة إن الله كان لطيفا خبيرا إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما ربي شحتي صدري وسلي أمري وحل العقد من لساني يفقه قولي أستغفر الله ربنا من كل ذنب ونتوب إليك ربنا زد العلم اللهم يسر ولا تعسر وتمن الخير يا فتاح يا فتاح Alhamdulillah, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we thank Him for this opportunity and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of our sins for making the effort to come here and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I mentioned before, Jumu'ah, Allah mentions, is a dhikr, it's a reminder. So inshallah, in today's khutbah, I would like to remind myself and everybody here to have the taqwa of Allah, to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that we do, and in every actions and every aspects of our life. Uh, we are in the blessed month of Muharram. This is one of the four sacred months in Islam. And Muharram begins the new year of Islam. And we see that Muharram is special for a number of reasons. But one of the reasons why Muharram is special, at least for myself, is because there's something important happened in history in the month of Muharram, in the 10th of Muharram. And that has to do with the family of Rasulullah You see, your Iman and my Iman is not complete until we love Prophet ﷺ more than our own selves. If Prophet is supposed to be more beloved to us than our own selves, then it makes sense that the family of Rasulullah has to be more beloved to us than our own families. His family is important. His family, Ibn Mas'ud he says that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He chose to reveal the Qur'an on people, He chose the companions on, on, on the Prophet sallallahu He chose the companions to accompany the Prophet sallallahu alayhi And from there, He chose the best people to become His family. So the, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is actually chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet says that I'm leaving behind two things. If you hold on to these two things, you will never be misled. In one narration, he says, I'm leaving behind Qur'an and my prophetic hadith. If you hold on to this, you will not be misled. In another, another hadith, he says, I'm leaving behind the, the Qur'an and the, my family. And my family. If you hold on to this, if you follow them, you will not be misled. And so, his family, uh, Allah subhanahu says in the Qur'an, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجِزَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ The word for the family of Rasulullah sallallahu is أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ The people of the house. So who is among the people of the house? Who is from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Obviously his wives. All his wives, the Azwaj al-Mutahharat, Umbahat al the mothers of the believers, they're all from the families of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who else is among his family? His children. And we see that only Fatima radiallahu anha survives after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So all the lineage that continues from Fatima. So Fatima, Ali radiallahu anha, Hassan, Hussein, and the lineage that goes on till, till the end of times. And so inshallah, in today's khutbah, we would like to focus on one member from the family of Rasulullah who had a very tough life and his end came in the month of Muharram, the month we are in right now. And that is none other than Hussein radiallahu anhu. So today we'll be talking about the life of Hussein bin Ali bin Abi Talib. Hussein radiallahu anhu was born on 4th of Hijri, four years after Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu and he passed away 61st Hijri, 61 years after the migration of Rasulullah Sallallahu to Medina. The Prophet says something beautiful about him. He says, whoever loves Hassan and Hussein. So who is Hussein by the way? Hussein radiallahu anhu is the son of Ali radiallahu anhu. So we have Fatima and Ali radiallahu anhu. From there we have the two sons, Hassan and Hussein. Hassan was the older son, Hussein was the younger son. So the Prophet says, whoever loves them, Hassan and Hussein, they love me. Meaning, whoever loves them, love me. If you don't love, if you truly say that you love Rasulullah Sallallahu we as believers, as followers of Rasulullah Sallallahu we have to love Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhumah. And Hussein radiallahu anh only narrates eight hadiths from the Prophet Sallallahu and his name Hussein was given by Rasulullah. So you can imagine how close Rasulullah Sallallahu was to this baby, Hussein radiallahu anh. The tahniq and aqiqa was done by Rasulullah Sallallahu What is tahniq? Tahniq is when a new baby is born, you know, a, a righteous person chooses some date, and then he puts the date in the mouth of the baby. Uh, that's called tahniq. The Prophet did the tahniq himself for Hussein radiallahu anh, and he does the aqiqa as well, the sacrifice that we do after the baby is born. So the Prophet Sallallahu has had a very close relationship with Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhu. We see that one day the Prophet Sallallahu comes out and Hussein radiallahu anhu was playing. And you know the Prophet Sallallahu plays, you know, catch with him. So wherever Hussein would go, the Prophet would follow him, right? Hussein would go to the right, the Prophet would run, you know, to the right. And if Hussein radiallahu anhu goes to the left, Rahmatul Alameen, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would follow him and uh, you know would go after him and finally he would hug him and then he would give a kiss on his forehead. Oh, right? This is how close Hussein and this is how much Rasulullah Sallallahu loved Hussein radiallahu anh, that this forehead received the kiss from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we see that the Prophet says Hassan and Hussein are going to be the leaders of the youth in Jannah. They're going to be the leaders of all the youth in Jannah. And the Prophet says that their house is going to be right opposite to my house. They're going to be that close. Right across my house is going to be their place. It's, it's very hard to get to that position of Maqab and Mahmud, the highest position. So anybody getting close to that position is an honor. And so the Prophet says, you are going to be with me. And then the Prophet says, whoever wants to see a person of Jannah, let him see Hussein. For, for there is nobody today who is more, most, more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa than Hussein. There is no one more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa on this earth than Hussein radiallahu anhu. And so one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was wearing a black, uh, black garment, black wool. And then what happens is um, Ali radiallahu anhu enters 
and he gives him a hug. He embraces him. Then Fatima radiallahu anha enters, and he embraces her as well. And then Hassan radiallahu anhu enters, he embraces him as well. And then Hussein radiallahu anhu enters, he embraces him, and he hugs all of them. He sa and then he reads this beautiful ayah that I just recited in the beginning of the khutbah. He says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجَسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَلُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِرًا Verily, Allah wants to purify you, O people of the house. O my family, Allah wants to purify you and remove all kinds of filth from you and give you that high status with me in Jannah. Right? And so this ayah, you know, is the foundation for what happens later on. Allah wants to purify them. And purification happens through test. Purification happens through difficulties. When you and me go through difficulties in life, that is because Allah wants to what? He wants to purify us. He wants to make sure, He wants to test our Iman, how strong are we? So if you are beloved to Allah, your test is going to be severe. And so we see the people who are beloved to Allah, the family of Rasulullah went through a lot of difficulties. And I'm going to focus on Hussein radiallahu anh, specifically inshallah. So just going back, going, going through the history a little bit before we get to, get to his life. So we have the first Khalifa Abu Bakr radiallahu anh. Then we have second Khalifa Umar radiallahu anh. Then Uthman radiallahu anh. Uthman radiallahu anh was actually assassinated by the Muslims. Muslims, a group of Muslims came and they killed Uthman radiallahu anh saying that he, that he appointed his own family as governors. So they had their own things, they killed Uthman radiallahu anh. So there was a big chaos in the Muslim world. In Medina this happened. Khalifa Uthman was killed by, by the Muslims. Then there were two groups. One group of Muslims said, we need to take revenge on Uthman's killers. We need to take revenge immediately and go after them. The other group said, no, we will not take revenge yet. Let's choose a Khalifa. Let's choose a leader. Let's come under one banner. Let's unite the Ummah. Then we'll go after them. So the, umma, the group that said, let's go after the rebels of Uthman an, was from the camp of Muawiyah. And the group that said, no, wait for the leader, let's unite everything and then go fight, that was in the camp of Ali radiallahu anhu. So there were two Khalifas at this time. Some people chose Ali as a Khalifa, as a leader, some chose uh, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu as a leader. So fast forwarding, eventually Ali radiallahu anhu passes away because the third group that was formed, he, he kills Ali radiallahu anhu, they kill Ali radiallahu anhu, so he passes away. So that on this camp, you have Hassan radiallahu anhu becoming the Khalifa. Right? So the first son of Ali radiallahu anh, he becomes a Khalifa. On this side you have Muawiyah continuing. So there were two groups, Muslim Ummah was split. And the Prophet sallallahu said something beautiful about Hassan radiallahu anh. He said, this son of mine, this grandson of mine, is going to unite two great Ummah of mine. Two great Ummahs of mine. Right? And that's what Hassan radiallahu anh does. He rules for six months, two Khalifas at the same time. And then after six months he says, I'm going to give up my leadership. I'm going to give up the Khalifa, I'm going to work under Muawiyah and follow him. And so he actually unites the two Ummah together and Muawiyah radiallahu anh continues to rule for 20 years. Alhamdulillah, there was, there was peace. Now what happens? Fast forwarding, Muawiyah radiallahu anh, he passes away. When he passes away, what, what, should, what should he have done? He should have chosen the other leader, Hassan, to be the next Khalifa and continue. But instead, Muawiyah radiallahu anh, he's still a Sahabi. He chooses he, he chooses his, uh, his uh, son, Yazid bin Muawiyah, his own son to lead. And Yazid bin Muawiyah was not like Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. He was a Sahabi, but Yazid was not. He didn't have that training. So he was a cruel leader. He was doing a lot of killing. So Hassan radiallahu anh, you know, he, he saw this and then eventually he passes away. But then the next son, the next son after Hassan was Hussein. Hussein says, no, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to go under Yazid and fight with him. No. And Hussein was not... Hussein was actually upset at Hassan. Why did you give up your leadership when your father Ali fought so much to get this leadership? So he was not happy. So Hussein radiallahu anh does not give the bay'ah, the allegiance to Yazid bin Muawiyah. That's where the problem begins. And so what we see here is that should you support the cruel leader? Should you support the oppressive leaders? And the answer is no. If that person is going against Allah's messenger, is oppressing, you have no right to support it. So he goes against says, I'm not going to give the bay'ah. And so what happens? is that they go to Mecca, they stayed there in Mecca, uh, Hussein radiallahu anh, Abdullah bin Zubair, there was a whole group of formed, and so Yazid is trying to get them to give the bay'ah, make him the leader, and so they refuse. In the meantime, people, uh, Hussein radiallahu anh, he gets letters from Kufa, a okay, key, key word to remember, Kufa, Kufa is in Iraq. They get letters from Kufa saying, 
you guys come over to Kufa. We have a lot of support. We'll support you. We'll help you. Come over. We'll form the leadership. And we'll fight against Yazid bin Muawiyah. And so Hassan radiallahu <coughs> anhu was not sure. Is this real letters or people are just making up? So he sends his cousin Muslim bin Aqil to go to Kufa. So he sends his cousin Muslim bin Aqil. You, my cousin, go to Kufa and find out what's happening. Is it real story or something fake? So Muslim bin Aqil, he goes to Kufa and he finds out that yes, people are indeed interested, that they want to support the son of Ali and continue this, this uh, position. And so Muslim bin Aqil is there, he gets 18,000 people to give, give him the allegiance on behalf of Hussain Allah. And so he takes the allegiance and Muslim bin Aqil writes a letter to Hussein saying, everything is good, come to Kufa. Leave Mecca, come to Kufa with your family. And so Hussein radiallahu an, as soon as he gets the letter, he, you know, uh, he takes his family. He had 73 or 72 members with him. He leaves to Kufa, right? On the 8th of the Hijjah, on the 8th of the Hijjah. Then what happens, Yazid, he recognizes something is happening in Kufa. Something is happening. So what he does, he changes the governor of Kufa and he replaces and he appoints Ubaidullah. Now Ubaidullah is keeping a close eye on what's happening in Kufa, make sure nothing is going against the leader. And so they realize that Muslim bin Aqil has come from Mecca to do something here. And so they go after Muslim bin Aqil. Muslim bin Aqil is hiding in Hani bin Urwa's house. A person, he was also a, a, a righteous person. So he was hiding in his house. So this governor finds out that Muslim bin Aqil is hiding there. So he tries to go and he finds out that Muslim bin Aqil is not in that house. So instead he takes Hani, the, the owner of the house, and he takes him as prisoner. Now Muslim bin Aqil who was in Kufa, he addresses the people of Kufa. You people, you said that you will support Hussein radiallahu anh, you will support his mission. Today a, a follower, a, a, our, our uh, brother has been taken as prisoner, Hani bin Urwa. Is there anybody who's going to come and support him? Is there anybody who's going to come, we're going to go march to the king's court and request Hani bin Urwa to be free. And so what happens, he, uh, 4,000 men come up. 4,000 men come up in the morning. And then what happens by the afternoon, only 400 were left. Only 400 were left. By Maghrib time, only 30 were behind Muslim bin Aqil. And when he stands up for a prayer for Isha Salah, only 10 were behind him. When he finishes the Salah, nobody behind him. Everybody left. The very people who told Hussein radiallahu anhu to come have deserted him. They have left Muslim bin Aqil and everything. And subhanAllah, this is a quality of a hypocrite. This is exactly what a hypocrite does. When things are good, he's there. When things become difficult, he turns his back. He finds another hole. And you know, th this, is a, this is a state of the Muslim ummah today. Most Muslims are in this state today. As, uh, and subhanAllah, the Prophet says, the one who turns away from the battlefield, that he has committed a major sin. He has committed a major sin, the one who turns away from the battlefield. So anyways, Muslim bin Aqil has nobody, now he's finding place to hide somewhere. So he goes to a woman's house, he finds an old woman, and he explains, I need some water, I, I'm here for some help. This old woman finds out that he, Muslim bin Aqil, is from the family of Rasulullah She was delighted. Welcome, welcome, please come in. What an honor it is to have a member from the household of Rasulullah He was honored, and she, she was honored, and she welcomes Muslim bin Aqil, and they have a good time, and she's waiting for the son to come, so that she can inform that a member from the Prophet's family is here. And when the son comes, then, then it, what happens is the son was actually was with the governor. So when he comes, out, comes to home and he finds out that Muslim al-Aqil is in his house, he goes to the king and says, Muslim al-Aqil is in my house, you can come and take him. So the governor comes, then they surround Muslim al-Aqil, they take him and they execute him. They execute him. This is what happened in Kufa. Now what happened? Hussein radiallahu anh, he already left Mecca. But Muslim bin Aqil, before he was executed by the governor of Kufa, he writes a letter back. He says, O oh Hussein, do not come to Kufa. The people who said we were going to support you are not going to support you. They have deserted me, everything has changed. Do not come. And so Hussein radiallahu an, he, he the letter was written on the 9th of the Hijjah. So Hussein left on the 8th of the Hijjah. So the, the letter never reached him. So Hussein radiallahu an, with his family of 72 members, he leaves Mecca. And then what happens, as he's leaving, many companions come to him. Ibn Abdullah bin Abbas come and say, Oh Hussein, do not go to Kufa. We know what happened, these people are not good. And then we have Abdullah bin Umar come and say, Do not go to Kufa. Sa'id bin Sa'id, 
Sa'ad al Khudri saying, do not go to Kufa. All these people stop him. But Hussein radiallahu anhu, he had this firm intention, says, no, yes, you brothers, you are, I know, I know you want the best for me, but I made this intention, I have to go, I have to do what I have to do, I have to stand up against this leader. So he goes, and what we see here on the side point is that a true Muslim always gives righteous advice. A true Muslim will give good advice to his friend, to his, to his, to his brother. So anyways, fast forwarding, we see that Hussein radiallahu anhu, now he's, he enters Kufa, he's stranded. He's stranded, this whole army surrounds Hussein radiallahu anhu, the only grandson of a prophet alive today. The only grand, grandson of a prophet alive, he's completely stranded and surrounded, and then Hussein radiallahu anhu, he gets three options. I give, I have, I'll give you three options, to the, he, says, he, he gives to the army. Number one, he says, I'll go back to Mecca. I'll go back to Mecca, let me go, I won't fight anybody, I'll go back to Mecca. Second option, Hussein radiallahu anhu gives, is that I'll go somewhere and fight in, some, in the cause of Allah and become Shaheed somewhere else. On number three, let me go to Yazid, I'll go directly to Yazid, I'll talk to him. And these, this army, this cruel army does not let Hussein radiallahu anhu go anywhere. They deny, deny all three options. They say, you're going to stay here and you're going to die. And so what happens, and then another armies after armies come, Hur bin Ziyad, all these armies come one after the other, and they try and, uh, you know, strand and surround Hussein radiallahu anhu and the 72 men and women and children all together. And then Hur bin Ziyad, he says something beautiful. O oh, oh grandson of the Prophet, do not test me. I don't want to harm you. Do not, do not, you know, test me. So Hussein says, may your mother lose you. What's wrong with you? May your mother lose you. That's why he says. And this, or this general says, you know, I cannot reply to you the same way you reply to me. I cannot say the same thing about your mother. Because your mother is who? Fatima radiallahu anh, the leader of the women in Jannah. I cannot say what you have said to me, but do not test me. So all these people have soft heart towards Hussein radiallahu anh. So then the, the governor of Kufa sends 4,000 men and then another thousand, they all surround Hussein radiallahu anh, and they're completely stranded. Then on the 9th of Muharram, Hussein radiallahu anh, he stands up and he gives a speech to his people. He says, pray, he first he praises Allah, all praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease and in times of difficulty. We praise him. And then he says, No Allah, in times of ease, Allah will remember you in times of difficulties. I praise you and thank you, Ya Allah, for sending a prophet among us. I thank you, Ya Allah, for making us among the family of the Prophet I thank you for the Qur'an, Ya Allah. And then he says to the people, O oh people, don't forget that you are from the Ummah of Rasulullah And he says, Our day with the enemy is tomorrow. We are going to face the enemy tomorrow. The night has now come. Make it beautiful. Pray to Allah, connect with Him, and make this beautiful. And then He says, we didn't come here for aggression. We didn't come here to harm anybody. But they are not letting us go. They are not accepting any offer. We will face whatever the Qadr is. So Hussain radiallahu anh, he sleeps and he sees a dream. He gets up, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. People ask him, oh Hussain, what happened? He says, our death is near. I could see the angel of death announcing that we are about to die. And they ask him, what do you see? I see the Qadr of Allah. I see the decree of Allah. And then I see my sister screaming and coming out and saying that the enemy is here. That's a dream that Hussain radiallahu anh sees. And then we move on. We see that Hussain radiallahu anh, he turns to his family and says, you family, you, you family of Aqil, Muslim and Aqil, you guys go back. Why are you here? They want me. You guys go back to Mecca. And then they say, are we going to go back to Mecca without you? What's life without the leader? We cannot go back. We'll be with you. And he tells his own family, you guys go back to Mecca. They want me. Why are you guys here? And then they say, we, are, we came here to die. We, we, are about, we are going to die anyways. It's rather that we die fighting for the truth than to die in some, somewhere else and, 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 and be cowards. And so they say, no, we are going to be with you and support you and die with you. And then we see Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu, sorry, not radiallahu anhu, Ali, the oldest son, he comes out on the, on the tenth of Muharram. The tenth of Muharram, he comes out to fight the enemy, and then he fights like a lion. He fights brave like a lion because his forefather, Ali radiallahu anhu, was called a lion. He fights like a lion, and then he is killed, and he yells, he says, Allahu Akbar. And then Hussein radiallahu anhu says, Oh my son, remember that prophet. Your Prophet will be a witness for you, do not worry. And then Qasim, his other, uh, the oldest son of Hassan radiallahu anh, he comes out, he was beautiful, he was handsome, and he fights like a lion as well. And then when he was struck on the head, he calls out, Oh my uncle. And then the, the uncle Hussain radiallahu anh, says, Oh my nephew, I cannot help you today, but know that there is no pain after today. 
And then one after the other, one after the other, the entire family of Hussein was killed by the Muslims. And then Hussein his little son Abdullah was just on, on his bed breathing his last moments and Hussein embraces him and then an arrow struck him and even he dies. And then this and then at this point, Hussein says, Allahumma sabbirna ala qada, Allahumma sabbirna ala qada, oh Allah, give us patience over your qada. And then the people describe that I have never seen anyone as brave as Hussein. He was so brave that there's blood all around, that people, are, his own family is dead around him, but he was calm and composed. And then we see that he, he fights, then he fights the enemy bravely for the whole day he fights. And then Hussein actually did not, did not drink water for three days. And so he pauses for some time to go to, you know, to, to get some water. And then at that point, an arrow comes and hits him. And then he falls to the ground. And then he's, he's crawling to get some water. And then people prevent him. At that point, Hussein says something really beautiful. Oh people, let me drink some water today. Let me drink some water. Because on the day of judgment, when you will come to my, my grandfather, Prophet wasalam, at the Hawd of Kawthar, and ask him for water, what do you think he will do to you? If you don't let me drink water, what will happen to you on the day of judgment near the uh, al of Kawthar? And so the people, when they heard this, they actually moved back. And then people came, his enemies came, they surrounded him, and they struck him 60 times. And then they cut his head and separated the head from his body. This was the very head that the Prophet ﷺ kissed and embraced and hugged. The very, the, and these are the Muslims. This is very Muslims, and then they cut his limbs, and uh, all these they separate all of these limbs together uh, from from his body, and they made the horse trample on him. And this was the grandson of the Prophet At that point, the the sister of Hussein of Allah she sings a beautiful poem. It says, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, may angels send salutations upon you. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Nabiina Muhammad. May Allah send peace and blessings upon you. Your grandson is lying in the battlefield. His shroud and coffin is blood today. His limbs are cut. He is trampled by the horses and your progeny is being killed. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad. They never gave up hope. They saw some wisdom of Allah. They were patient with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of difficulties. And, and then the soldiers even cried listen to this. Right? That's how the, 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 the life of Hassan of the Allah comes to an end. Aqul qawli haza wa astaghfirullahi wa alaikum wa alaikum wa alaikum wa It, it seems like a tragedy. It seems like a tragedy. But you know, for a believer, this is not the end. For a believer, this is actually a good news. It's actually a good news. You see, the Prophet وسلم, when he was alive, Jibreel comes to him and he says that, O Prophet, one of your grandsons will be killed by your own people. One of your grandsons will be killed by your own people. And the Prophet says, they will kill my grandson while believing in me? That I am their Prophet, they're still going to kill my grandson? Jibreel says, yes. And then he brings some dust from, from that place where Hussein of Allah was killed. And says, this, this is a place that will be killed. And he's going to be killed in the uh, riverbanks of Euphrates. Right? You see, it's, it's, it's very hard to absorb this. But you see the pain that we go through, the Prophet Sallallahu already experienced in his life. You see that, that the difficulty that he has to go through, that he experienced that his own grandson that he's playing around with will die one day in a, in a manner that we just talked about. Right? SubhanAllah. And Ali radiallahu once enters and the Prophet was crying. He was crying and Ali radiallahu asks, Oh Prophet, what makes you cry? What makes you cry? Did, did anybody upset you? And Prophet says, No, no. Jibreel came to me and he says that your son will be shaheed, will be killed by our by own people. And so he was crying for that. This is how much the Prophet was hurt. But what we see is that when things go bad, when, th when bad things happen, it's not because Allah hates us. It's not because Allah does not like us. That's because Allah loves us. Allah has a special love for some people. It's a beautiful hadith. Allah says there are some people who deserve a very high status in Jannah. They, Allah wants them to be the highest. They want, Allah wants them to be the Prophet's neighbors in Jannah. But their deeds are not enough. Their good deeds are not enough to get to them, get them to that level. So what Allah does, Allah puts them in difficulties. Allah puts them in difficulties and tests them. 
And so they do more dhikr. They go through hardships. And any time a believer goes through a hardship, even a prick, right? Even a prick, what happens? That pain that you feel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sin of that, of that person. So difficulties that we go through, that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. Now what is the, what is the, how do we know that Allah loves us, not hates us? What is the way to test? The test is when difficult things happen to you, when bad things happen to you in your life, what is your response to it? What is your response to it? Do you get closer to Allah? Do you make more dua to Allah? Do you increase in your salawat? Do you increase in your dua? Or do you go away from Allah and say that God is unjust? God, what kind of God is this? Is that, what's your response? We see that Hussein radiallahu anh, he's going through difficulties. He's seeing his entire family killed right in front of him. What is he saying? Allah sabbirna al qada. Ya Allah, give us patience over your qada, over your decree. Right? This is a response a believer has. And always, it's always your response that's going to bring uh, uh, the, um, the change and the result of what, what Allah is expecting. Now, <coughs> some people mourn. Some people beat themselves up and they mourn, crying for Hussein and what happened to him. That is not from the Sunnah. That's not something we practice. That is not something practiced by Rasulullah And there's nothing. Yes, we feel bad for Hussein We pray for him and we pray that Allah SWT joins us with Hussein in Jannah. And with the Prophet Sallallahu but we don't do, we don't rip our clothes and beat ourselves like some people do. And you know, hopefully, inshallah, through this, through the life of Hussein Sallallahu Alaihi we gain some closeness to the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu and really appreciate and love them, and standing up for truth, standing up for truth regardless of what's happening uh, in our lives. So, inshallah, we pray that Allah Subhanahu uh, helps us to learn and benefit from the life of Hussein Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يرحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلمكم